I'm independent investigator and occult researcher John Rasmus. My only goal is to seek truth. I am a first-hand witness of poltergeist activity. I know it's real. I know it's a real phenomenon. Beyond that, I have a good idea. And six months of first-hand witnessed accounts testifying to the details of what it was, why it showed up, and if you subscribe to this channel, you'll learn more on that subject. In the year 2010, I first witnessed an unseen, invisible entity. A year later, I experienced six months of poltergeist activity when I rented a room. I would have moved out sooner, but it was the cheapest room I could find. It was an extremely traumatic event. I suffer from PTSD, legitimately, not as a joke, actually from the horrific experiences from the year 2011 when I was poltergeist haunted and terrorized for six months. Around the middle of that six month experience, I was violently attacked by this invisible entity. This isn't a Birdman situation where I was pretending to see objects move in my room. This isn't some type of schizophrenic situation where I was hearing voices. What I saw is what I saw. It's an actual experience that actually happened to me. I've mentioned this to a few people here and there, and one of the first people I mentioned this to told me to never mention it again, told me to not talk about it, which only made me want to talk about it more. I'm dedicated for the rest of my life to exploring the unknown, seeking truth, exposing lies, I did bust and expose the identity of John Teeter, the guy who went by that name pretending to be a time traveler. I'm not talking about John Teeter II, I'm not talking about John Teeter Jr., I'm talking about the original John Teeter from the posts of 2000-2001. I exposed that guy. Feel free to check out that video, the complete expose on John Teeter, but I'm moving beyond that, moving past that. I focus on the occult these days because ever since my 2011 encounter, the occult has caught my interest for obvious reasons. When the occult seeks you out, terrorizes you, haunts you when you're an innocent victim, and that's what I was. I never read a single occult book in my life. I was going to work every day and coming home, watching regular movies, regular TV shows, I'm not a horror fanatic. I don't watch horror movies at all. But the one time I did watch a corny 80s horror movie, the movie is called From Beyond. It's actually an H.P. Lovecraft inspired movie. After watching 15 minutes of that movie, I turned it off, closed my laptop, went to bed because I had to work the next day. No sooner than one second after I turned off my light and put my head on my pillow, we're talking my head was probably on my pillow for a millisecond before this entity jumped on top of me, grabbed my mouth, grabbed my throat, grabbed my tongue. So it felt kind of like three hands grabbing me. I detail this encounter in one of my videos. Feel free to check that out. Check out my playlist, The Poltergeist Haunting of John Rasmus. These encounters, these stories, they're all 100% true. They're not clickbait. They're not in any way, shape, or form exaggerated. If anything, I have under-exaggerated them. The opposite of exaggeration, I've held back a lot of the information. Not only because I'm writing about it in a book called Corners of Rooms, but because most people don't believe me anyway. So I try to hold back the more fantastical details it wasn't like being in a movie. It wasn't like the movie Poltergeist. Objects didn't fly around my room. So some people have encountered, rarely, le levitation and things like that. I can't say that I ever witnessed with my eyeballs any levitation during the six month period. It mostly involved the entity, which was completely invisible, really broadcasting its presence, letting me know it was there by knocking on walls, knocking on tables, knocking on my bed, knocking on any surface in the whole room, sitting. I used the term sitting because it sounded like sitting. I couldn't see the entity, but creaking on everything, 
which sounded a lot like sitting on every object in the room, from boxes in my closet to anything that was in a particular corner of that room. The entity had a favorite corner of the room, and I talk about the corners of rooms in a few videos. Corners of rooms is one of the patterns I noticed after six months witnessing it for six months straight. I don't think these entities are aware that I happen to be a little more observant than the other sp sparse humans they've appeared to, and they probably didn't expect I would write a book on them, or maybe that was their plan all along. All I can say is this. They hide in the shadows. They hide in the unseen realm. They are the source and definition of the occult, pretty much, because they know a lot. They've been watching us for probably the length of time that we've ever existed on this planet. The creature that bothered me for six months, I believe it was assigned to me from the higher ranking entity from the year before. I've never detailed the higher ranking entity encounter on YouTube. I'm gonna keep that for my book. I have to keep back a few things. A few vision type experiences took place during the six month period. I'm keeping that for my book as well. I have read many occult books after the fact, after the encounter, and I have come across a good number of common threads mentioned throughout history, but never pieced together. Corners of Rooms is a repeating trend, a repeating pattern that almost proves that these entities are not a figment of the human mind, but are actual invisible entities from a higher dimension. I've heard some people say they're from a lower dimension. We are on the lowest dimension that can be occupied by any intelligence. The first and second dimensions can't be occupied. We are at the bottom of the pyramid of dimensions. These entities are slightly above us. I suspect one dimension above us. I say they are probably in the fifth dimension, but that's just a classification by humans. They're just, quite frankly, in the bardo realm, right above us, using Buddhist terminology. These entities are real. I stand as a testimony and a first-hand witness that they are real. And because they are real, other things in this universe are real as well. I do not believe this entity was a human ghost. I believe it's closer to a demon, but a lot of people will give me this dictionary mumbo jumbo on where the origin of the word demon came from. Guess what? I'm not interested in the origin of the word demon. I'm interested in uh, researching and recalling firsthand history that happened to me personally. So my story came from firsthand witnessing for six months straight, not just witnessing with my eyes seeing objects move by an unseen force, but hearing it as well, feeling it, and sensing it with even another sense, some might call the sixth sense. The sixth sense is so broad that you can't pinpoint it to one psychic trait. Some people claim to be able to see dead people. I cannot do that, and I'm glad I cannot. I can't say that I know anyone that has claimed to regularly see dead people. So that would be an extremely rare spiritual talent that I'm glad I do not have. But I do have a spiritual talent, I do have a spiritual gift, and that's where it goes into the realm of, wow, spirit doesn't exist, man. Spirit's fake. So you have all these people from different religious backgrounds or non-religious backgrounds. I'm interested in the truth, seeking truth and exposing lies. I don't care about religious or political backgrounds. What I care about is the truth. What happened to me happened to me. It wasn't a figment of my mind. Very, 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 very few people have experienced authentic poltergeist activity firsthand. I seek to find at least one other authentic poltergeist witness on this planet Earth. I have yet to communicate with one. I have had a few comments of people say they might have heard something here or there. I'm talking about someone who had a similar encounter. When a poltergeist entity makes its presence known in your room for six months straight, 
It's not a question of, hmm, I'm not sure. You 100% know for a fact the second after it happens. As I mentioned earlier, I do suffer from PTSD. Probably not as bad as war veterans who are in the foxhole where bombs blew up and killed their friends. I feel for people with such extreme PTSD as that. In no way, shape, or form do I claim to have that. But at the same time, they don't have what I have. I have a different form. It involves being terrorized by an invisible creature for six months straight. An entity whose singular purpose was to bother me, torture me by keeping me up all night. And it did keep me up all night on more than one occasion. Probably the first two weeks, I didn't have much sleep. Let's just put it that way. But the human mind can adjust it's very bizarre how the human mind can adjust. There's a guy named Roger Morneau who also claims to have had poltergeist activity. He has since passed on. I'm not part of his religion. One thing I can confirm is I believe he probably did have authentic poltergeist activity because he mentions at least four tiny obscure key details that no one else mentions when talking about poltergeist activity. Most people talk about the cliche stuff for straight out of a Steven Spielberg movie. Most people talk about the cliche horror movie details or the, the stuff you'll find in Google results. But when you experience it firsthand, you get a front row seat to certain secrets. I haven't revealed them all, I haven't shared them all. Because holding back a little bit, you gotta do that to filter out frauds that will try to claim that they experienced the same thing you experienced. There are a lot of people out there. There are a lot of frauds. There are a lot of charlatans. There are a lot of con artists. There are a lot of scammers and schemers and hoaxers out there in this world. Sad but true. I'm not one of them. I'm 100% telling you the truth. I seek truth, expose lies. Do I have flaws? Yes. Have I made a few comical videos that were based on comedy? Yes. But concerning corners of rooms, concerning poltergeist activity, the six months in 2011, the original encounter in 2010, zero comedy and zero jokes, zero skits, zero falsehoods are in that story. What I experience is real. What I experience is true. It's worth investigating. It's important. It's probably the singular reason I'm here on this planet Earth. We all have a purpose, believe it or not. There's a movie called Hellboy. Hellboy, the main character in that movie, he has a regular hand, and then he has another hand, which is like extremely powerful. And that hand is like a key to open up a gate of hell. He was designed for that singular purpose. This theme, I've noticed a few times in Hollywood movies. I don't know if they do it on purpose, or just copying each other, or if there's some secret meaning behind it, but another movie would be iRobot. The main robot in iRobot, the one with the highest amount of artificial intelligence, has really dense metal, because its singular purpose was to turn off something. I don't want to ruin the movie for you, but that robot's purpose was to kind of like Hellboy, open up the gate or close it. You can see this repeating theme in the movie The Matrix. Neo, he has a singular purpose, save mankind. Even in The Matrix, on part two, Reloaded, there is the key maker, the key master. He has a singular purpose to open that one door with that one key that only he can make. You see the repeating theme in these movies, Hellboy, I, Robot, The Matrix, The Matrix Part 2. We all serve a purpose. My purpose is to expose corners of rooms, unseen invisible entities, poltergeists, to be actual intelligent, independent from humans, entities living in a dimension slightly above us. They can look down at us and see us. We can look up and not see them. That's how dimension works. When you break down the dimensions, that's how it works. If there was an all-seeing eye, it would be at the very top, looking down and seeing everything. But we look up and we can't see the all-seeing eye 
but it looks down and it can see us. These demonic entities, these invisible entities, they are not all seeing. They're only in one dimension above us, or maybe two. But they can see everything that's below them. But there are higher, better entities, higher dimensions, higher bardo realms, above those negative entities, and they can look down and see them, and look down further and see us. Please support this cause of seeking truth and exposing lies. I'm John Rasmus. I thank you for supporting me. Be seeing you.